Now let's examine the electron pair geometries and the molecular geometries of molecules that have six things around the central atom. Six things constitutes 12 electrons or six electron pairs around the central atom. So the first thing uh, we'll do is we'll examine sulfur hexafluoride, a molecular compound, and we notice that we have six valence electrons for sulfur, seven valence electrons for fluorine, there are six of them, and so that totals out at 48 valence electrons in this molecule. We draw the Lewis structure, which is always the first step in making a geometry determination. We notice that there are no non-bonding pairs of electrons around the central atom sulfur, so we just have one, two, three, four, five, six bonding pairs of electrons. Since there are no non-bonding pairs of electrons around the central atom, we know that the electron pair geometry and the molecular geometry will be the same. This gives us an electron pair geometry that we call octahedral. And an octahedral geometry has bond angles of 90 degrees. They're all the same, only 90 degrees, and again, the molecular geometry and the electron pair geometry are the same because there are no non-bonding pairs of electrons. So let's start with our tool and let's go ahead and make sulfur hexafluoride. We'll put one bonded atom, two, three, four, five, and finally six bonded atoms. We call this electron pair geometry octahedral. So Anytime you have one, two, three, four, five, six electron pairs around the central atom, the electron pair geometry is octahedral. No non-bonding electrons, same molecular geometry, octahedral, and all the bond angles are 90 degrees. Now let's examine the derivatives of the electron pair geometry that is octahedral. So we have an electron pair geometry that is octahedral. The derivatives are created by the presence of non-bonding electrons. So our first example will be square pyramidal uh, xenon oxytetrafluoride. So for xenon oxytetrafluoride, our first derivative with one non-bonding pairs of electron, count up the valence electrons. Xenon has eight, oxygen six, and there's seven for each of the four fluorines with 42 being the total. I go ahead and I draw the Lewis structure as always. I have one, two, three, four, five, six things around the central atom. Because I have six total things, which are all electron pairs, all electron pairs, including the non-bonding electrons, I have an electron pair geometry that is octahedral. However, my one non-bonding pair of electrons produces a molecular geometry that's different, and we call it square pyramidal. I've tried to sort of draw it so that you can see the pyramid that is on one end of the octahedral electron pair geometry. So we have bonded atoms up here, and then the non-bonding electrons I chose to put in the base. We could have inverted that, and it would have been exactly the same. So let's build our molecule that has six electron domains, but one of those domains being a non-bonding pair. So we'll put all of our bonded atoms, which is going to be five, and then we'll add a non-bonding pair of electrons. And then we'll rotate our molecule so that we can see exactly what we have. And we've got the four bonded electrons and fifth bonded electrons up here. And if I imagine putting a plane on between each of the two atoms up to the top, to the peak, you can see that what we have is a pyramid, and it's a four-sided pyramid, so we call this molecular geometry square pyramidal. The bond angles, again, are 90 degrees only. We have a non-bonding pair of electrons on one side. And remember, the non-bonding electrons are going to try and get as far away from each of 
the bonding pair of electrons as they can. And also remember they take up a little bit more space so they probably push these bonded electrons a little bit out of the plane and reduce that bond angle slightly. But the ideal bond angles that we'll go with in any testing situation will be 90 degrees for all of these. Now let's take a look at xenon tetrafluoride which is our second and final derivative from the octahedral electron pair geometry for this molecule. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six things from our Lewis structure, but two of those things are non-bonding electrons. So we have a non-bonding pair of electrons here, and we have a non-bonding pair of electrons on the central atom here. Remember that non-bonding electrons take up more space, so they want to get as far away from each other as they can, and the way they can do that is to be on the opposite sides of xenon. And remember that it's absolutely forbidden to put a non-bonding pair of electrons at 90 degree angles to another non-bonding pair of electrons. So that never happens because it's so energetically unfavorable. This gives us a molecular geometry that we call square planar. So we have an electron pair geometry that's octahedral. We have two pairs of non-bonding electrons, and that gives us the square planar molecular geometry. Let's go ahead and build our square planar molecular geometry. The first thing we'll do is we'll put four bonded electrons on our central atom, but then we're going to add two pairs of non-bonding electrons, and those non-bonding electrons are orienting themselves as far away from each other as they can. What's left is four bonded pairs of electrons, and they stay in the same plane as you can see right here. They're all, if you were to take a plane and you were to just place it right across there, it would cut through all of those atoms right down the center and all of those bonds right down the center. So we have a square because if we draw lines across all of the bonded atoms, we get a square, and because they're in the same plane, we have square planar. All of our bond angles are 90 degrees, and that's it. So we have molecular geometry, square planar. Electron pair geometry is octahedral. The molecular geometry is different from the, from the electron pair geometry because of the presence of our non-bonding electrons.